If you have benefited from resources produced by G3 Ministries, would you consider donating to support us? Even a few dollars helps us to continue to publish free curricula, articles, podcasts, video resources, and more. Visit g3min.org slash give or open the G3 app to give a one-time or monthly donation. Articles from G3 Ministries John Gill and Armageddon Written by Chipley McQueen Thornton Revelation 19, verse 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth with their armies gathered to make war against him who was sitting on the horse and against his army. The Battle of Armageddon. When is it and how will it play out? Gill believes Armageddon is the final act before Christ's glorious and public return. The pressure mounts during the victorious Latter-day Glory era when the kingdoms of the world, now become Christian, defend themselves against wars waged, spiritual, ideological, and even physical, by the beast, the false prophet, and their followers. The gospel conquers the wicked, and Christ pronounces an eternal death sentence upon them to the everlasting fire. To understand it, let's track how Gill moves from the Old Testament prophecies to the major end times players. The Old Testament prophecies. Gill's prophetic calendar begins with God's revelations to the Old Testament prophets. First, the latter-day glory prepares the way. Numbers 24, verse 17b predicts, A star shall come out of Jacob, a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and it shall crush the head of Moab and break down all the sons of Sheth. This prophecy goes on to describe the subduing of the nations by Israel's king. See also Psalm 2, verse 9. Gill believes this rule will begin most visibly with, quote, the further breakings forth of the glory of the latter day and the ensuing victory of Christ over all his enemies, close quote. Second, the beast and the false prophet, that is, the Antichrist, are destroyed, Daniel 7, verse 11 predicts, I looked then because of the sound of the great words that the horn was speaking. And as I looked, the beast was killed and its body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. Gill states, quote, The severe punishment of Antichrist, considered in both his capacities, civil, that is the beast, an ecclesiastical, that is the false prophet, is expressed in being cast into the lake of fire. Third, it is Christians who feast upon the anti-Christian nations. Ezekiel 39 verse 17b and verse 21 state, Speak to the birds of every sort and to all beasts of the field. Assemble and come gather from all around to the sacrificial feast that I am preparing for you. And I will set my glory among the nations. And all the nations shall see my judgment that I have executed and my hand that I have laid on them. See also Zephaniah chapter 1. Gill describes Revelation 19 this way, quote, the whole denotes the entire slaughter and utter ruin of the whole anti-Christian army and the certainty of Christ's victory over it beforehand, and also the destruction of all that are followers of Antichrist throughout his dominions, which will now wholly fall into the hands of the saints and be enjoyed by them. End quote. Fourth, 
all remaining wicked are destroyed. Zephaniah 1 verse 18b states, In the fire of his jealousy, all the earth shall be consumed. For a full and sudden end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. Gill describes it this way, quote, They will be convicted and confounded and not be able to stand against the light and evidence of of the word of God and will be sentenced by Christ to everlasting punishment. Close quote. You can almost feel Gill smiling as he wrote these words, quote, And now the world being clear of all Christ's enemies, pagan, papal, Mahometan, that is Islam, the way will be prepared for Christ's open and glorious kingdom in it. End quote. The major end times players. We were given a glimpse into Armageddon back in Revelation chapter 11 verses 13 through 17. To Gil, the good guys are as follows. The white horse equals the gospel. The white horse rider equals Christ who, quote, rides forth in the gospel, close quote. The armies of heaven equal the faithful Christian saints on earth at the time, quote, the church militant, close quote, as he calls them. The angel standing in the sun equal gospel ministers in the latter days. And the birds of the air equal the same as those in Revelation 17, verse 16, namely, the Christian princes and saints who will share in the spoils of the anti-Christian nations. The bad guys are as follows. The beast equals the anti-Christian civil powers or the state. The false prophet equals the pope in his ecclesiastical capacity, or the false church. Together, they are the church-run state governments of the world. And the earth's armies equal the remains of the papists along with the pagans and the Muslims. Reflections. Once again, I appreciate how Gill reads the Bible forward, not backward. He begins with the Old Testament prophets and casts a line into subsequent revelation. Too often, Bible students do the opposite with prophetic material and otherwise. This should never be. I'll never forget our family driving to a friend's house. A deer carcass laid on the roadside. Several hours later, we passed by the deer carcass again. Birds were devouring it. One crow had its beak deep in the eye socket of the deer. It was a striking image. I had always envisioned Armageddon as a victorious battle in which the wicked of the earth were killed and the literal birds of the air descended on the carnage. Yet Gill makes an interesting point. He cites the Old Testament prophets who, throughout the Old Testament, poetically refer to humans devouring the flesh of others. Almost always, it is the wicked devouring the flesh of the righteous. Here, it's the reverse. As Gill says, quote, The Christian princes and people will be satisfied with their kingdoms, riches, and wealth, and will rejoice at their destruction, and in the righteousness of God, which will be displayed in it. End quote. In other words, if that image of the crow feasting upon the deer carcass represents Christian saints feasting upon the bounty of the anti-Christian nations, as Israel did when they plundered the Egyptians, Exodus 12, verse 36. I can live with that so long as the King of glory is present and approving. <laughs>